I'm Ann Carmichael, a student financial aid consultant with LELA. I want to talk to you today about the student financial aid process. You know that continuing your education after high school can greatly improve your earning potential. And because college can be expensive, you need to be aware of and prepare for the costs of pursuing a post-secondary education. These costs include equipment, books and supplies, personal expenses, room and board, and tuition and fees. But the good news is that financial aid is available from a variety of sources. The federal government, our state government, your college or career school, and nonprofit and private organizations. Every year, the federal government provides more than $120 billion in student financial aid. Types of federal student aid include the Federal Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Teacher Educational Assistance for College and Higher Education Grant, the Iraq and Afghanistan Service Grant, Federal Work Study, and direct subsidized, unsubsidized, and PLUS loans. Federal student aid grants are a form of financial aid that does not have to be repaid. The federal grant family includes Pell Grants for undergraduates with financial need, FSEOGs for undergraduates with exceptional financial need, service grants for students of military parents who died defending the United States following 9-11, and TEACH grants for students pursuing a teaching career. The Federal Work Study Program provides part-time jobs to help pay for your college expenses. When you tell the Financial Aid Office that you're interested in Federal Work Study, you'll be considered for this program. Your earnings will be paid to you directly and the money used for college expenses, which should decrease your student loan debt. Direct subsidized loans are based on financial need and no interest is charged until you graduate or cease to attend. Almost everyone is eligible for direct unsubsidized loans regardless of financial need. However, the interest begins to accrue on these loans once fully dispersed and throughout the life of the loan. So you see there's a big difference between direct subsidized and unsubsidized loans. Try to remember, always accept the subsidized before the unsubsidized because the you and unsubsidized means you always pay the interest. If offered loans, accept the federal student loans first because payments aren't due until you graduate or cease to attend. The interest rate is fixed at a lower rate and no credit check is required. Private loans should be accepted only as needed because most require that payments be made while you're still in school, the interest rate might be variable and often much higher, and they almost always require a cosigner. Students and families should do their research before selecting a private loan lender, as interest rates and incentives to borrow will vary. To dispel the myth, Almost everyone is eligible for some type of federal student aid. All federal student aid and most institutional and private aid is contingent upon completion of the free application for federal student aid or the FAFSA, which launches on October 1st of each year. 
Student financial aid is awarded on a first come first served basis. So submit your FAFSA as soon as possible. Remember to pay close attention to and meet the FAFSA deadlines set forth by your college, state government, and federal student aid. Begin the FAFSA process by collecting all the documents needed to complete the form. These include student and parents' social security cards, because the FSA ID and FAFSA must reflect the names and numbers exactly as printed on your most recent social security card, even if your name has changed. 2019 federal income tax returns, because to use the IRS data retrieval tool, you must enter your name and address exactly as printed on the tax return, even if your name is misspelled or you've moved since you filed it. If you don't have a copy of your tax return, contact your tax preparer for a duplicate copy or request a tax transcript from the IRS. The W-2 forms, because there's information here that may not be found on the federal tax return and your bank statements and records of investments, because you must report the balances of these accounts as of the date that you submit the FAFSA. Begin by creating the Federal Student Aid ID, or the FSA ID, because it allows students and parents to identify themselves electronically when accessing Federal Student Aid websites, such as the FAFSA. The FSA ID consists of a unique username and password created by you and should reflect only your personal information. Each student and one parent should create an ID by visiting fsaid.ed.gov. Only your email address and, the num and your phone number should be listed in your FSA ID. Quite often, a student will use a parent's mobile phone as his alternate number and vice versa. This is considered shared information and it will cause issues electronically signing your FAFSA. So if you don't have an alternate number, just leave that field blank. Your FSA ID username and password is your official legal electronic signature. So record it, keep it in a safe and secure place, and don't share it. Download the FAFSA mobile app called My Student Aid to submit your FAFSA on your mobile phone or other device if you don't have access to a computer. Or complete the FAFSA using the web-based version at FAFSA gov begin the fafsa by logging in with the student's fsa id because the fafsa is the student's application for federal student aid the parent fsa id will be used to transfer tax information into the fafsa and to sign the student's fafsa the high school class of 2021 should be completing the 2021 2022 FAFSA because this is the academic year that you are seeking financial aid. There are eight sections that should be completed before submitting the FAFSA. Those include the student demographics, school selection, dependency status, parent demographics, parent financials, student financials, sign and submit, and confirmation. As you move through the FAFSA, should you need clarification, click on the question mark beside each question. Select the hyperlinks provided. Request a FAFSA online chat. Call Federal Student Aid. They're available to take your call from 7 a.m. until 11 p.m. Or call me on Leela's FAFSA helpline. 
For this session, I'll cover the most commonly asked FAFSA questions. But if you have one that I don't address, feel free to email me after the presentation or call the FAFSA helpline. I'll be happy to help. The citizenship requirement. The student must be a citizen or eligible non-citizen to complete a FAFSA. However, if his parents are neither, they will enter zeros anywhere a social security number is requested. In these situations, the student should complete his FAFSA, print the signature page, submit the FAFSA electronically, sign the signature page, and mail it to federal student aid at the address provided, where it will be manually matched with the electronically submitted FAFSA and marked complete. Only the colleges that you list on the FAFSA will consider you for student financial aid. So add all of the schools that you're considering, up to 10 at a time. If you're applying to more than 10 colleges, follow the instructions provided in this section. To determine your dependency status, you will be asked to consider 10 questions. Will you be 24 or older by January 1st of the year for which you're applying for financial aid? Are you married or separated but not divorced? Will you be working on a graduate degree? Do you have children who receive more than half of their support from you? Do you have dependents other than children or a spouse? who live with you and receive more than half of their support from you? Are you currently serving on active duty in the U.S. Armed Forces for purposes other than training? Are you a veteran of the U.S. Armed Forces? At any time since you turned 13, were both of your parents deceased? Were you in foster care? Or were you a ward or dependent of the court? Are you an emancipated minor? Or are you in legal guardianship as determined by a court? Are you an unaccompanied youth who is homeless? Or are you self-supporting and at risk of being homeless? If you can answer yes to just one of these questions and provide a legal document supporting your claim, you're considered an independent student for FAFSA purposes and will not be required to provide parental information. Unfortunately, for FAFSA purposes, you're not an independent student just because you file your own taxes or you live alone and support yourself. Who is my parent when I fill out the FAFSA? The parent or parents that you lived with the longest in the past 12 months should be listed on your FAFSA. If you live with your biological parents, list them both. If the parent you lived with the longest the past 12 months is separated, divorced, or was never married, you should list that parent on the FAFSA. However, if that parent is remarried, you should include his or her spouse. In other words, federal student aid wants to know the financial standing of the household that the student has lived with the longest in the 12 months prior to the date the FAFSA was submitted. If you're identified as a dependent student, but your parents refuse to provide information on your FAFSA, simply answer, I'm unable to provide parental information about my parents, state that you do not have a special circumstance, and submit your FAFSA without parental information. Next, you should contact your college's financial aid office to discuss your situation. If not, you'll only be considered for student loans. Your college financial aid office will determine your aid offer, not federal student aid, so don't skip this important step. 
to expedite the processing of your federal student aid, the student and parents should use the IRS data retrieval tool to provide income information. If either the parent or student did not file a return for the 2019 tax year, they should select not going to file or will file and enter their income manually. If they had no earnings in 2019, they'll simply add zeros in the, in the income fields requested. Using the IRS data retrieval tool can diminish your chances of being selected for verification. If you're having trouble using the tool, contact Federal Student Aid or Lila's SPAFSA helpline for assistance. Using your 2019 federal income tax return, enter your name and address exactly as it's printed on your return, even if it's misspelled or you've moved since you filed. Before submitting your FAFSA, it's important to review your student aid report. This report shows each question that you were asked and your answer to each. It's important to review so that any errors that you may have made can be corrected before being sent to the college financial aid offices listed on your FAFSA. The student and one parent should sign the FAFSA with an FSA ID. Don't submit without signatures because your FAFSA will not be complete and you will be alerted weekly by federal student aid to update, uh, to update your FAFSA and resubmit. Review your FAFSA confirmation page to find out the next steps that you should take to complete the student financial aid process to see a list of the colleges that will receive your FAFSA data, to find out your, expect, your estimated expected family contribution, and to take a look at your financial aid estimates. And remember, these are simply estimates. Each college financial aid office will determine your aid on their campus. Once your FAFSA is fully processed, it's shared with the colleges that you listed. Then each college financial aid office will begin to identify any aid that they might be able to offer you. If your family's financial situation has changed since 2019, contact each financial aid office because they have the ability to adjust your aid by using their own professional judgment. Your net price will be determined by each office by subtracting any grants and scholarships that you're eligible to receive from your cost of attendance. The net price can then be paid in cash or by accepting student loans to pay the balance. Your student financial aid offer will reflect the college's cost of attendance and any grants, scholarships, work study, and student loans that you've been offered. And remember, you're, you'll receive a separate financial aid offer from each of the schools that you've listed on your FAFSA. Accept your financial aid in this order. Scholarships and grants, because they are free money that do not have to be repaid. Federal work study, because this is earned money that you're not required to repay. And then loans, because this is borrowed money, which must be repaid with interest. Leela's FAFSA Completion Guide and Workbook for the Class of 2021 is free for Louisiana high school seniors. So please drop me an email to claim your copy. Use Leela's Senior Checklist for the Class of 2021 to stay on track this year. I'll include that with your guide. And most important, scholarships. These are gifts. They do not have to be repaid. There are thousands of them. They're offered by schools and employers, individuals, private and nonprofit companies, 
community organizations, religious groups, professional and social organizations. Some scholarships are merit-based and awarded based on academic achievement or on a combination of academics and a special talent or trait or an interest you might have. Other scholarships are based on financial need. A scholarship might cover the entire cost of your tuition, or it might be a one-time award of a few hundred dollars, but either way it's worth applying for because it will help reduce the cost of your education. You can learn about scholarships from your high school counselor, your college financial aid office, or your library's reference section. This year, Leela offers two scholarship opportunities, a $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship for seniors attending a Louisiana high school, and a $1,000 Choose Louisiana scholarship for students attending a Louisiana college. Visit askleela.org for the details. For students or parents who need to fill a funding gap, after factoring in all scholarships, grants, federal and state dollars, consider Leela Choice, Louisiana's nonprofit education loan program. Find all, out all about it at leelachoice.org. Your questions are always welcome. So after the presentation, if you'd like to call Leela's FAFSA helpline, or send an email to carmichael at leela.org. I'd be happy to address those. And I'm looking forward to hearing from each of you and from receiving your $1,000 FAFSA completion scholarship application once you get your FAFSA done. 